So we'll move on to this week in wrestling, Carl. And what a week it's been. What a week it's been. What a week it has been. Sadly, that was the back end of the week. (laughs) (laughs) Definitely isn't the start of the week, I'm afraid. So, Um, as our resident Raw expert, Carl. I definitely get a raw uh, raw deal of this. You got the raw deal. Um, Yeah, another fucking stellar episode of Monday Night Raw. Fucking, yeah, great. They really show you how much of the flagship show it is, don't they? Yeah, flagship show, absolutely. (laughs) Um, So, yeah, so the Raw we got to enjoy this week was all built around the concept of having a series of one-on-one matches um, with the winners going on into a triple threat match. Um, later on in the night to determine the new kind of challenger for Drew McIntyre's uh, championship at Night of Champions. I'm just going to slightly gear up my complaining later, and I'm going to say, isn't it nice that they did have a series of one-on-one matches that determine the triple threat, though? Mm. Isn't it nice how they they set up the reasons for the people in the triple threat being in the triple threat? I like that. I mean, it definitely made made sense about why they were in the triple threat, uh, unlike some... Some uh, it's a little bit of credit I'm going to give Raw. <laughs> um, yeah, so on you know on paper, okay, that sounds all right. What we actually got? Um, so here's the match card. So we had Keith Lee taking on Dolph Ziggler for one of those uh, opportunities with Keith Lee picking up the win. No shit. We had Mickey James. So Dolph, Dolph managed to get out of the underground bunker. Well, exactly. <laughs> yeah. He's, <laughs> he's managed to escape from Shane <laughs> and then he's come back up and he's got his ass kicked. I would, I would love that more as a gimmick of like they can't get out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Please, it's, actually, it's just a hostage situation. <laughs> he's become like fucking his own version of Saw and he's <laughs> like... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you have to win your freedom. Exactly. <laughs> it's only one way you leave this this room. It's in a coffin. <laughs> God, Shane, no. Um... So yeah, so we had that. We had Mickey James taking on Lana uh, with Mickey James picking up the win. We had Randy Orton taking on Kevin Owens in the second um, of the deciding matches with Randy Orton picking up the win. Not that one. it was much of a match, to be fair. Um, we had the Hair Business taking on the Viking Raiders and Cedric because they're a team now. Of course um, they are. That, with, that was a thing. With the latter picking up the win, surprisingly. So the Hair Business... Great, what? yeah. I, I know you need to go through the card, Carl, but what, what can happen there? There was a trio there anyway. I have no idea. Where the fuck's Ali now as well? Like, he's Spanish, yeah. so... Ricochet, Ali, and Cedric, that was your fucking team. Exactly, and even now, you've got fucking Ricochet, Cedric, and Apollo, pretty much. And they still don't do that, so what? Um, but anyway, <laughs> so we had that. We had the Riot Squad taking on the Iconics with the gimmick of the losing team having to split up and no longer be a tag team. And the Iconics lost. Um, um, I don't even want to talk. What the <laughs> actual fuck? Um, this is so... And I'll moan about it more because I'm sure it's in your, in your own shades, but oh, for fuck's sake, why? Uh, I, yeah, yeah, for fuck's sake. Sums that up perfectly. Then we had a Tornado tag match with the Street Profits taking on the Mexicools, um, which I want to say ended up in a no contest because... Retribution turned up and flickered the lights. Oh, scary. Um, <laughs> we had more Raw Underground, more hostage situation from Shane. Um, and then the main event of the evening. Oh, no, I missed one. Did I miss one? We had Seth Rollins taken on Dominic Mysterio um, in the final uh, decider for the third right. participant. In the to be fair, you, you did mention the... Uh... Oh no! So, yeah, sorry. Yeah, you did. Uh, apologies. I'm I'm going off on a tangent. You did. Yeah, you did miss that one. <laughs> <laughs> um, with Seth Rollins actually picking up the win in this one, so that made the main event of the evening a triple threat between Keith Lee, Randy Orton, and Seth Rollins, which was actually pretty decent to be fair. Oh yeah. Um, I mean, that's a that's a bankable match there in itself. Well, yeah, a long exactly. time to get to it, but you know. Yeah, I have to sit through all that shite for it, but you know. Um, and Randy Orton picked up the win, so him and Drew will run it back one more time at Night of Champions. So that was the card. Um, I've only got about two or three highlights. So Understandable. Let's get them out the way. And the first one, you, I, I don't even know how you'll feel about this as a highlight, but um, so Asuka kind of came out and was like, yeah, you know, I'm ready for whatever. Asuka's ready for this, that, and the other. And then Mickey James comes out. And it's like, oh, wasn't ready for that. Um, so like, I can I can get behind the Mickey James and Asuka title fights. Like, yes, 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 Defo. please sign me up. Um, yeah. So all over that. But then obviously, fucking 
Natty and Lana have come out and get involved as well, which is just complete fodder at this point. Like, I don't care about that. I now care very much about Mickey and Asuka. Yeah, what um, I do want, though, out of a Miss Mickey and Asuka match is to actually have a match. Yes, please. If they no. book it where <laughs> we have Natty and Lana getting involved again, I'm going to be pissed off. Yeah, but no chance. Have them have a fucking just... actual match. And an actual finish and everything. Like, please, just, yeah, please. Um, so make that happen. But yeah, um, the, the highlight for me was more around like the concept of them two potentially facing off. And also Mickey James, I just think she hasn't, she hasn't lost a step. Like she looks like one of the best fucking women in the, in that locker room today. Um, oh, definitely. She was so ready to come back. Like, uh, yeah. yeah, I don't know if this is like I, I don't mean to speculate, but because she's sort of classed as a, a woman's veteran at this point, I don't know if this is like maybe like a, a farewell tour. So she's given it her all because she's like, this is the last time I'm gonna have a run in WWE, so I'm gonna make it count. So I don't know, but yeah, she's looking awesome. Oh god, yeah. Oh Mickey, you so fine. You blow my mind. Hey Mickey. Um, so yeah, definitely a highlight for me. Um, then Seth's promo again was fantastic. Um, fucking love this guy in this uh this gimmick. Like the I way love it too long. Never ruin it. <laughs> <laughs> well yeah um like the way the way he treated murphy in the segment um i was like you know he's, he's costing me too much just for that get out of my ring slap him in the back of the head like just great fantastic heel work of like someone who you know it's it's kind of i kind of get similar vibes like with, with rollins as i am with like Brody lee at the minute in aw like they're very much like leaders of this their own little cult if, if you want yeah uh, thing is i think sadly it's going to be almost a lazy version of Brody lee and it's going to be yeah. He's he's only got Murphy at this point, and they're going to split them up really quick. And we're going to try and give Murphy a bit of a baby face push, which isn't going to work because he's not really got any charisma. No offense, Murphy. Uh, no <laughs> offense, buddy. Um, and well, sadly, I think honest, it's going to fall flat. We immediately hate the guy because he's previous, uh, yeah, previous uh, data of Alexis. So fuck you, Murphy. Yeah, um, so we all quietly so... resent you anyway. But no, like um, like your look at the the parallel. Now you've given it like. The Dark Order as a whole, not just Brody, but the Dark Order, we've now got an awesome looking tag team, mm-hmm. at least out of that. Oh, uh, yeah. They're all counted in numbers, so I don't know which two guys it was, but the, they were looking fucking awesome. Um, and it, it's stuff like that where you go, well, I can see them actually building up where if anyone does turn on Brody, which won't happen anytime soon, and I'm glad for that, um, it'd feel more legitimate. Like so far, we're getting decent levels of it. This is how they should really book Seth because we've had Brody's mm-hmm. now managed to corrupt uh, Anna Jay and, and um, Tyanara Conti, and he's, he's got Colt Cabana, like the, you know, the fucking jolly mm-hmm. goof that Colt Cabana is, is now Colt Cabana, you know what I mean? It's mm-hmm. like he's, he's pulling in people and he, he looks like this, this proper figurehead. And It'll be a while, it, like it looks like they're not booking anything anytime soon, but it'll be a while before they do anything like that. Whereas WWE just almost can't hold the water, so they're going like, now we need to progress with the Seth stuff. Let's have some sort of breakup and betrayal and yeah. this that next thing. It's like, calm down, tell a story. Yeah. Well, well, I, I, you've you've absolutely nailed it there. Like, there's no longevity with anything they do. They want to always kind of spice it up and change it, and like people will lose interest in this, this kind of stuff. So that's why you never get any. Yeah you know, st- like story arcs for a long period of time. But yeah, this, this, to be his... honest, this is booked most of the time, like me as a nine-year-old playing with me, action figures. That That's how long the stories last. That this, this is what it's like. Yeah. They've got the attention span of a child and that's how it looks. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Um, yeah, so I, I, I think Seth, Seth's kind of promo was, was really, really good. Uh, and I've got to give Dominic credit as well. Like I know we've both said like, how pissed off would you be if you're an NXT guy or a guy working the way on the indies for ages? And then it's just like, oh, Rey Mysterio's kid. Yeah, he's going to be in SummerSlam. He's going to be on the on the main roster and stuff like that. But yeah, do you know what? He's he's, he's putting a shift in. Like it's the, yeah, the yeah. match was was really good. You know, he really is proved me wrong. He's definitely given given everything out, you know, out there. So I'm I'm with you on that. I can't deny it. I mean, I'll still always stand by the point I made that there's definitely a bit of nepotism there. That he's oh, he's on like he's fighting some of the biggest people in the WWE straight out of the gate on Raw and on like SummerSlam and stuff like that. And you'll go, well, that's a bit, you know, just because he's a Mysterio. But at the same time, yeah, he is, he's definitely, he's definitely his father's son, isn't he? You know what I mean? He's got some talent there. You can't deny it. Yeah. And he's, he's had a really good show. And don't get me wrong, I'm, I'm not naive enough to go, oh, he's a fantastic wrestler straight out the gate. You look at his match with Seth, Seth was helping him. And you get that because mm. that's what it's about. You you put over the newer talent, don't you? And you you help build them up. And while Seth took the win, which was logical, he helped him look awesome. And um, 
he's definitely coming along in leaps and bounds and he's definitely suited to this this business yeah definitely i can't i i feel like you know eventually they're going to tell like the the whole lucha libre story with it and he's going to end up getting a mask and he's going to end up kind of carrying on that lineage and you know i believe well, it, it's only naively Carl, it's be called I uh, sorry come I was going to say, I believe it, um, it's already been announced that he's going to be end up getting called Prince Mysterio to carry on the um, like the, the name and stuff like that. So, oh, Finn Balor's not going to be happy with that. <laughs> there you go. There's his next rival. Um, but yeah, so I think fair fair play to the dude. He's, uh, he's definitely putting a shift in, and it's it's entertaining watching him. And I think you're absolutely right about Seth as well. Like it is Seth's doing a fantastic job of, of really making him as well. Um, so yeah, re- really enjoying him. Yeah. And um, yeah, sorry, just to, to go back to the, the little point I was going to make is I was naive enough. I didn't realize that you had to earn your mask. That was that was news to me that. Yeah. So um, like you say, I think that Lucha Libra story is like, it's there, it's ready, isn't it? Yeah. Um, and I'd be interested to see that play out. Yeah, I feel I feel like they're going to get to the point, like this is obviously Ray's probably last run now, which is why he just probably decided to, has he even signed on? Like he must have done, but um, I think I he's contracting, now. So yeah. I think he's probably maybe renewed it for like another year or so, but I think Ultimately, the, as an that's in the contract, so we can continue to do cameo on Twitch. <laughs> oh yeah, um, but he's uh, he's gonna basically that. I think that'll be his retirement. Is the crowning of of the mask and stuff like that, and like mm. the the legacy continuing. But um, yeah, so I thought that was fine. And then lastly, the the last highlight I had was just the main event. Like I said, you know, if you look oh, at the yeah. names, it it feels like a pay per view worthy kind of main event. Like you've got Orton, you've got Rollins. Like them two are always like chemistry together anyway. Then you add in like this new and exciting kind of uh, Keith Lee um, into that mix, and you know, yeah, really, really yeah. good. Um, no, I totally agree. I think uh, the, it's almost a shame it was on Raw. Like, it was probably the one of the things that mm. made Raw not a fucking zero. But oh, yeah, um, Jesus. it's one of the uh, one of the few things. Like you go, yeah, that could have been a pay per view uh, match, definitely. And mm. um, I mean, it was never not going to be good, was it? Looking at the participants, mm. but um, yeah, thoroughly enjoyable. Yeah. Now, now, Anthony for the Oshites and okay. I'll kick it off where, where we've just left off really and that is with um, Randy Orton and Keith Lee's promo work it was very meh so Orton this week has, um, has he been hanging around with Retribution in their fucking mom's basement or what he's been playing around with Photoshop he's photoshopping <laughs> people's heads on fucking people in hospital beds like really this is a guy who sadistically kicked the fucking head off a 71 year old last week he's a guy who fucking cracked Drew McIntyre's skull and he sat there going, hey, look, and just put Drew McIntyre's head on this guy in the hospital. Really? Even if um, even if you don't like view it as lame, which it is, it's lame as fuck, right? And it, it, it's kind of stupid. Like, it kind of ruins the point of Randy because he's a tormented guy who does these things on impulse. That was how it was always being booked. He's like, he's gonna, he's not gonna. You know, he didn't didn't premeditate attacking Rick but then did, do you know what I mean? It was mm. part of this whole hearing voices in his head bullshit, right? So we're now meant to believe that he's spent a significant amount of time at home with his laptop planning these <laughs> little photos. It just doesn't in keep with the character either. Exactly. It was just so, like, and for what as well? What, like, what, what was it meant to do? Get, like, a little cheap pop? Like, it was, yeah. it was fucking stupid. And then Keith, Keith comes out and he's like, oh, well, you know, maybe you shouldn't have a title opportunity because I beat you. Um, he hasn't got one, you dickhead. That's the whole point of the fucking. That's the theme of the show. You try. <laughs> you've got to aim on just like you. And also, when the fuck did Keith Lee become Stevie from Malcolm in the Middle? What What is with his promo skills? <laughs> his <laughs> slow talking kind of makes that is such him a boss reference. Sound. He like, just needed the inhaler, didn't he? <laughs> <laughs> like sit, sit, just fucking talk, man. Like. I, um, he was pissing me off at one point. It took so long. You so much. You almost went Jordy then. <laughs> Fuck you, pissing what, me man? off, man. <laughs> Don't know what that was. <laughs> My Jordy accent. <laughs> Sorry, um, but no, I, I totally agree. I've not been. Uh, I've not been big on his promo skills, certainly since he went to the main roster. And his NXT stuff was still a bit like. Oh, I'm gonna give this title away. I, I couldn't really judge the promo because of how stupid the fucking decision was. Um, no. But I've not been big on his mic skills. I'll be honest. No, God, no. I, that dude just, just, just speak. Just fucking speak. I'd like, oh my God. I, honestly, if I'd love to see a side by side of him cutting that promo on Raw and a fucking episode of Malcolm in the Middle. Them two are the <laughs> fucking same, I swear to God. Um, and then, how do you end that segment with a fucking a wild dolph appears? Just like, you know, <laughs> we're, up, we're, on, we're on hard camp with Orton and fucking Keith Lee the next minute, like, kapamo. And he's just there and it's like, what? And then it's commercial break in the match and it's like, really? 
Like, yeah. There's some work. real fucking issue. Like, I've got some issue with SmackDown on that as well, where it's like, okay, uh, like, why why are these sort of all smashing into each other segment wise? What's going on? Like, yeah. Just like they haven't planned the match properly or planned the start of the match properly, and you're like, it's kind of hurting my head. Yeah. So. Like for me, that was such a shit way to kick off the show. Like it was, it was, it was awful. Then, speaking of awful, fucking bachelor chick, she's back, right? What, I'm, I'm telling funny? you, mate. I'm telling you, she's part of the Amway. She just lives there. <laughs> like, dude, like, you must be honest. She can't even act. Why? Why is she there? Like, why is she there? Like, I don't know. Was she, was she the Bachelorette? Was she on the Bachelor? I don't know who she is. But I don't really even care. So, even if she's famous as fuck. Right, let's say she's like a proper A-list celeb, and apologies because I'm going to list like Bruce Willis as an example because I haven't got any decent celebs in my head. Right, no offense, Bruce. Um, and he was there every week. I'd still be going, "Why the fuck are you there?" It makes no sense. I mean, I I just got pictures of fucking Bruce Li- Bruce Willis kissing fucking Ivar or Eric or whoever on the cheek. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah they, love that. all the exact same segments, but with Bruce. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I just, I, I yeah. I don't really have anything more to say other than why the fuck is she there? Like, get off Just a small explanation of going, WWE brought her in to do this or to even try and do some backstage interview and I'll have her in some capacity, but she's been there for fucking six weeks or something now, just standing backstage. Exactly, exactly. And then... I, I'm start, the, at this um, point, I think, is she actually just picking up men? Is that what she's there what? to do? She's, just, she's playing Bachelorette again and she's like, hmm, which one? Because that's... Oh, yeah. All the segments are just there, like, oh, will she like Angel Garza? Or will she like the guy from the Viking Raiders whose name I never remember? Exactly. Like, it, it's pointless. And it's not doing anything for Garza either. So I had this a little bit further down on the highlights, but since I'm talking about fucking this idiot, um, I may as well talk about Garza as well. So, like, obviously, she's now in, into one of the Viking Raiders for some fucking reason because it's meant to be funny, okay? Mm. Um, and Garza obviously wants to, even though he wants the interview check as well, you know, because he's Garza and he's a ladies' man. To what yeah, he does. Cool, yeah. But then, you know, Retribution get involved later on in the night and he saves her and runs off to the back and then all of a sudden Retribution come out again in the backstage and then he just fucking bins her off and runs away. And it's like, really? Like, that not only just ruins Gaza, but, like, just makes him look like a little bitch. <laughs> so th- that's <laughs> awful as well. Yeah. Especially because, let's be honest, it's Retribution. They're a bunch of, like, fucking <clears throat> Apple Store geniuses who've decided to attack Raw and you're scared of them and run away. Exactly. Exactly. Um, speaking of fucking geeks who, you know, you'd run away from, Alistair Black's back. He sat there with his little eye scarf on um, and he comes out. To, so Kevin Owens meant to take on Randy Orton um, to, to earn a spot in, in the triple threat match later in the night. And Alistair Black comes down and attacks him before the match. And, you know, Kevin Owens like, no, I can still fight. You know, fight Owens, fight. And yeah, then RKO when he's, he's dead. So it's like, okay, we get we're doing Alistair Black and Kevin Owens, but why? Like, that's the I don't problem. Care about Black. A little, little thing in storytelling, Raw or WWE, right? Just a, a small minor thing, and it's called motivation. <laughs> exactly. There's no fucking reason for Alistair to have any issue with Owens. Are you booking him as a heel? Yeah, that's fine. Maybe build some sort of reason why he's fallen out with him. Yeah. There's, like, there's literally nothing. I think you're trying to put him across as this demented weirdo who just randomly attacks people, but we've already got Randy, and they do it better with Randy. Well, exactly. So, I, I, yeah, I have no idea. No idea where they're going with this. Um, I mentioned it before, I think, on the news segment, but um, the next thing is the fucking Mysterio family. So it started off with just Ray and Dominic, then fucking then uh, Ray's wife's there, and it's the three of them, and now his fucking daughter's there. Like, who's, who's next Who's the next week? The fucking family dog? The fucking goldfish? <laughs> like, two gerbils? I don't understand. Like, it just stop bringing your family in, Ray. Or <laughs> <laughs> just rock up in a coach one week. Well, exactly. I... I have no idea what, what it was adding to it. Unless in his contract, he's basically said, you will hire all of my kids and all of my relatives. Um, and we'll... <laughs> He's tricked them. He signed the contract <laughs> and they're like, ah, we got him. And he's like, ah, but look, it didn't say Ray. Uh, <laughs> the name on the contract <laughs> does say Mysterio. Um, no, but yeah, like his, his daughter can't even act either. So like there was a bit after the match where Rollins snaps and starts beating the shit out of Dominic and it cuts to the back and it almost looks like his fucking sister's smirking. And it's like, oh, oh. great. Yeah. You've, you've added a lot to this segment. This is going on TikTok. <laughs> yeah. Aaron Lana just there doing fucking dances in the background. Like, yeah, <laughs> stupid. Um, I've got one little note here that just says, Hurt Business slash Cedric Alexander. Where is it going? No idea. I don't care, if I'm honest. So, Probably nowhere. Awesome. 
Like, and don't get me wrong, I think Cedric's boss and the hair business are, are okay, especially MVP and his, uh, his skills. But, like, how many weeks do you want to drag this out for? Like, he doesn't want to be part of your little group. You can beat him up afterwards. He still doesn't want to be part of it. And you know what they're going to do? They're probably going to make him be part of it and it's going to turn on the others eventually because that's I know, what you they know, do. I'll, um, I'll, I'll watch you have to ruin someone's career. Like, at some point, he's going to go, fine, I'll join you. And they'll go, no, you're a fucking loser. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Like, why, well, why would we want you? We, we literally beat your ass every week, you loser. <laughs> so, well, yeah, yeah, no idea. No idea. Um, this next one, Anthony, I feel like we'll both passionately be able to talk quite a bit about this one, is he broke up the Iconics. And we mentioned it in the news a couple of weeks ago that basically Vince McMahon has got a bit of a hard-on for Peyton Royce. Um, and he wants her to be the next kind of breakout single star. But oh, why? Right? The Iconics make each other. Like, Peyton Correct. is going to be a flop on her own. Billy Kay has got no chance on her own. And it's like, these guys together were... were uh, iconic. To it. Yeah, like, um, they were stupid, they were silly, they were entertaining, and it's like... They were, and I'm saying this in hindsight now, they were one of the better tag teams in the women's division. They were probably one of the very few legitimately put together tag teams that that worked. They were in sync. They'd been together for a while. They were established. And let's fucking ruin that. And then they put them up against. All right, we've had the ups and downs with Riot Squad, but they put two well-established women's tag teams in a match where one of them has to split up. And we've already got quite a shit women's tag division. What was the fucking point in this? Like thinking of that stipulation now as well. Really, how bothered would we would we be if the Riot Squad splits up again? Because I'd have been moaning about it just. Well, I'd have been moaning about it because of that. I mean, why did yeah. you come back together for this? Well, but exactly. at the same time, it's like it would have been less of an less annoying than what we've got because why? 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 Like the iconics work really well together. It's a crying shame. And weirdly, we're even getting like series of like videos on social media of like their highlights and stuff, reminding us how good they actually were as a tag team. I know. Why are you doing this to us? It is fucking stupid. And then to make it even worse, they they crop up later on in the night on Raw Underground um, and fucking Jessamyn Duke and fucking Marina Shafira, whatever she's called in there. And like, you know, Shane's trying to say to them, yeah, go on girls, you, you both go in there and you can both have a fight, you know, even if you're not a tag team on the main roster. And then Peyton just goes, nah, and throws Billy Kay in and Billy Kay gets battered. And it's like, why, why, why would you do that? Like, okay, so, stupid. so rather than having something that might have actually been compelling in splitting up a tag team that didn't want to be split up, and then trying to find a way back there. They've instead gone for the classic, I'm going to betray you, even though we've seen that with Sasha Banks and Bailey on the other <clears> channel. Yeah. And it was like, but it was like the shittest betrayal ever. It was just like, no, nah, I'm going to throw you into a thing and just go, like, what? Already split up. I love that meme that's going around, though, Shane hugging Peyton. Yeah. That's, <laughs> that's so crazy. uncomfortable. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, it, how accurate <laughs> is that, though? <laughs> yeah. So true. So true. But yeah, I just, I don't know. I'm, I'm very annoyed by this decision and very annoyed by the booking of it and the weird Raw Underground thing yeah. afterwards. So, not it, The Raw Underground thing was totally unnecessary, but splitting yeah. them up in the first place, like, <clears throat> I, I've, I'm very vocal about this, but, like, we've got Nia Jax and um, Shayna now as the tag champs with no one to fight. Yeah. They, they've beat Sasha and Bailey twice, again, spoilers, um, and... We're slowly just ruining all our tag teams. The Riot Squad are legit, like logistically, should I say, not really going to win. Like they've only just been back together. They're not really put in the same caliber in terms of booking at the moment. So we can't expect them to go up against them and legitimately stand a chance. So that's going to be a boring match because we know who's going to win. What have we got? We've got fuck all. Do you know what they're going to do? They're going to put Mickey James and Asuka together, and they're going to win. Then it's going to be oh, well, they're tag team champions, but they're fighting each other for the women's time. Oh, <laughs> probably. <laughs> Because they love the same story as a rehash over and over yeah. again. This is not um, me being unfair to the women's evolution and all that, but fuck the women's tag titles off. They're useless. You've ruined yeah. them. It's over. That's it. You, you haven't got any any tag teams, so why yeah. have tag titles? Even ones you tease at on NXT, you don't bother with. Nope. Like we've kind of got tag teams there, but not really, because they, they have the like the Mercedes Martinez of the group who's just there to be the enforcer while the other one gets all the gold. No, let's not make them an actual tag team. Fuck that. Just every, every, everything you do, women's tag team-wise, WWE is just stupid. Speaking of stupid tag teams, fucking hate Street Profits, Anthony. Hate them. Do me fucking head in. They're not funny. Not entertaining. They're just loud. They are. Very loud. Can't <laughs> deny that. They are loud. Like, my God. I just... I don't know if it's me. Maybe, maybe I'm old. Maybe I just don't get it. I don't know. But... <laughs> like I've seen in Friends. 
Do they have to be so loud? <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. Like, I d- honestly, I just I don't get it. I don't get it at all. They're, they're fucking annoying, man. They're so shit. As soon as they come on my telly, I, I'm so tempted to just skip them. I'm so tempted to just go, bye-bye then. Um, well, clearly, you don't want the smoke. <laughs> yeah, because that makes such a lot of sense anyway. Whatever um, that is. <laughs> yeah, so there's them. And then, do you know what? The match that they actually put on, there's a load of shit as well, because shit tribution show up. They flicker the lights and all, just like, Hoo-hoo, and then they turn up and... Um, then they like just start beating beating people up. The announcers shit themselves like they always do. Um, but they start beating up Zelina Vega. <gasps> but the announce the announcers make sure we know that there's females in the group too, and it's the females that are beating up the female. How do you know that, Cole? <laughs> no one knows who the fuck they are. What? This is the problem. You see, I'm all for equality, but I think Cole had to really stress that because somebody might have tuned in and saw. Uh, what potentially could have been at a glance a bloke in a balaclava attacking a woman. Exactly. And maybe WD didn't want to per- perpetuate that. Um, but, you know, this is when you when you do mad fucking weird bookings like this, <laughs> this is what happens. <laughs> it, just, like, it? it just makes it so stupid. Like, how, how could they know that there's women in the group? Like, fair dudes, you can kind of, you can kind of look at them and tell. But at the same <laughs> time, like, it's like... It's not, they've all come out dressed the same, balaclavas, loose-fitting clothes and hoodies, so you could... At a glance, when all the chaos is going on, you like Cole shouldn't have been able to determine that so easily. It's not yeah. as if, like, for some reason, the female members of Retribution come out with the cleavage. You know, it's not like they've done it like that, where their attire is blatantly there to show off assets. Um, exactly. You know, at a, yeah, it, in the chaos, you shouldn't have been able to do that so quickly. No, so so that that in itself was just fucking stupid. Um, but yeah, so I just I don't know. I'm I'm completely over retribution um, already. That's before we even figure out who they are. And it's, Do you know what else? It's gonna be la- it's gonna be a damp squib. That's what oh, it, yeah. it, it, no one's gonna be entertained by whoever this is now. No, because like like realistically, who's it gonna be? Fucking um, what's his face, Djokovic. Yeah, he's, he's yeah, he's he's gonna be the biggest breakout yeah, doesn't, star. Doesn't look like it's Tommaso because Tommaso's back. Um, so that that speculation's gone. So he mm-hmm. might be the biggest star there. And even if they bring back somebody like. It's not going to happen, but let's say they went for like someone like CM Punk, that'd get a pop, and the rest of them would fucking fail anyway. Oh yeah, It'd be the old pop and flop. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, so yeah, I don't know. I just I think the shit, and I'm I'm over it. And what else I'm over is the twenty four seven title because again, what the fuck? Why? Why? And it's the same guys as well. Like no one cares about it other than Tazawa and our truth. Like just fuck it off. It's pointless. See for me, right? This title. There's a reason that they did this 24-7 ruling with the hardcore title because it's quite a hardcore idea. This could be booked in a way. This could be booked where you go, let's say Bobby Lashley proves a point and takes a 24-7 title and he's just like this monster about it and he's like, well, go on, I can defend it all the time. Come at me. You know what I mean? He could mm-hmm. make it seem legitimate and like, shit, that's going to be a tough challenge and he's just tough enough to do it. But instead, we're getting a ton of fucking goofballs just pinning each other randomly. Yeah, it might as well be a big game of tag. That's pretty much what it is, isn't it? It's it like is. the world. Other than game. saying you're it, they're putting a title on them. That that's it. Like, <laughs> except it's like, oh no no, uh, uh, sorry, you can't tag me. That like because uh, we we went the the rules don't apply at this point. Like I'd I'd taken a time out from from being able to be tagged because <laughs> I was. That, that's more bullshit schoolyard what? stuff, isn't it? Yeah. Well, no, because you couldn't because I was touching the fence when you tried to pin <laughs> me. So that didn't count. And I'm going home anyway because my mum's turned up. So, <laughs> Well, exactly. So, like, yeah, it's pointless. Like, it's not, that's what I mean. It's not even a 24-7 title. So it's just, it's stupid. Yeah. I hate it. Um, yeah, not as much as Street Profits, but I hate it. Um, <laughs> and, then, and then lastly, my final fucking oh shite of, of Raw was just Raw Underground again. So I made this big thing, got to bring in Titus O'Neil back. And he, he comes back and he's like, yeah, hoorah, beats up some guy and then gets fucking chinned by Riddick Moss. <laughs> Riddick <laughs> Moss. Uh, okay. <laughs> oh, and yeah, because you know WWE, everyone's so over on Riddick Moss and nobody knows who Titus is. That was a fucking smart Yeah, decision. genius. Um, and then they fucking bring in them fucking little MMA dweebs of fucking Jessamine Duke and Marina Shafiro fucking can't punch the way out of a paper bag in real life. And I'm guessing they've been them. ditched by Shayna now. Well, exactly. Like She brought them I, in and then just left them there. Exactly. So I'm fairly certain Shane just like handed her a water cash and was like, "Thanks," and unlocked the door. I uh, wouldn't surprise. Um, he he owned them now. Um, but yeah, so like like who wants to watch them too? Really? Like 
what? Like, they were shit in MMA. It's like, they're going to be shit now. And then they have that thing, thing with is, fucking Peyton and Billy as well. Like, oh, what really awful. hurts their opportunities? Like, cause I didn't know them in MMA, as you know. Right. But what yeah. really hurts their opportunities is underground is not a place for booking or stories, or it's just a place for random shoot fights that don't make any sense. Have you ever seen a story in there? No. No one's even sure why it's happening, right? They need it to be on the roster. They need to be on the roster with a story that gets them over as badasses or something. Mm-hmm. But no, we'll just stick them in the underground. I, I'm honestly surprised that this has carried on for as long as it has. Like, I think, honestly, underground is just Vince's parking garage for wrestlers. But it's, it's, like, Just put them there for now. I might use them later. But it's kind of like, as you've just said then, though, there's... There's no point to it. There's no storylines or anything. So what? What is, what is the point of it? It takes up a significant amount of the show. Is it just because they book like they can't book a three-hour show anymore, so they just put some random shit in, like to give other people some exposure? Like they've had Dolph Ziggler in there doing fucking shoot fighting one minute, then you know they've had fucking the hair business were in there and stuff as yeah. well, and then I think got Shane being fucking like, oh he's done, he's done, oh, oh, oh he's done. <laughs> what I love like, as well is like Shane, don't you still run SmackDown? Kind of. Like that never actually so, got taken away. You've decided to just go and do a very small portion of Raw when you mm-hmm. were running SmackDown, and no one actually confirmed that you went. Well, apparently he's not even in charge of it. He's, you know, it's, it's the hair business who are in charge of it now, isn't it? So she's oh, yeah, just there to, yeah. to bounce around and go, "Oh, he's done, he's done, oh, he's done." Yeah, come back, guys. Small run underground and try and do cool guy things like fist bumps and stuff, even though he's in his fifties and it just doesn't suit him. Yeah, I've had a cool guy handshake, and it's like, what are you doing? <laughs> and you know, be be really creepy with uh, with young girls and, yeah, try and yeah. hug them. And stuff. <laughs> That's what I'm here to do: pay wrestlers <laughs> and make women feel uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> ah, he is just like his dad. Um, <laughs> nice. <laughs> so yeah, that that was raw. Um, it was. It was raw. Um, it was raw. I've got down Anthony, and I, I don't I don't even know why I've got it down to be fair, but I've got down a one point five. And I okay. think on, on the fly Bold right trick. now, right now, I'm going to drop that to a one because I've just reminded myself of how shit it actually was. Yeah. So for me, just, it happens sometimes when we talk about these things. It, it does. It does. And for me, other than maybe the Seth and Mysterio um, thing and the, the main event and obviously like the Mickey James a little bit. Yeah. Shit. Shit all around. So really bad. Not was not a fan at all. Now I'm with you. I was going to say one anyway. Like I know I didn't write it down, so you couldn't have possibly known that, but I was going to give it a one. Yeah. And it gets a one because of the main event. That's it. That's yeah. all it got. Like, that's all the, the only bit I enjoyed, the main event. Mm. And that's it. Yeah. I just, and as I much understand. as I appreciate that they actually gave reasons why that triple set was happening in the build-up to, those matches were a bit naff. So it's still just the main event. Yeah. I don't understand how you can have a, a talent roster like like they have and not be able to fill three hours worth of television with something at least somewhat compelling. Something that at least gets you a two <clears throat> under our rating system. Yeah, like, gee, like if it's a it's one... It's not like we're that strict with it. You're fucked. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, really, really bad week for Raw, I would say. Very. Couldn't agree more. So, we'll, uh, we'll move on to NXT then, Carl. Now, as everyone knows, uh, NXT was on Tuesday this week, so it garnered a fair few views, and I think they gave it some sort of name like Super Tuesday or some bollocks. Um, but I didn't pay much mind to that. What I did pay much mind to was the card itself, Carl. So we saw Breezango and Isaiah Swerve. No, Isaiah Swerve Scott. I keep saying that like it's his last name, and it's not. Is 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 Isaiah Scott? That's just a random nickname, mm. which actually sounds a bit like something you'd say, like. Oh, there's Isaiah Swerve. Um, <laughs> anyway. So we saw Breezango and Swerve go up against Legado del Fantasma, if I'm saying that right, in a street fight, Carl, um, with Breezango and Swerve taking the win. Yeah. We saw Candice LeRae go up against Casey Catanzaro with uh, Candice LeRae taking the win, logically. We saw Tim Thatcher versus Bronson Reed in quite a wounding win for Tim Thatcher because I was behind Bronson, so that's a bit of a shame. <clears throat> and then it's quite a small card this week because we had the NXT title up in an Iron Man match between Bala, Champa, Gargano, and Cole, with both Bala and Cole taking the win. What did that mean? What, what did that mean? What was the future of this? We'll talk about that shortly. <laughs> so <clears throat> I'm gonna start out with the with the opening match, Carl. It's not often that um I think NXT kicks off really well. Like most shows don't do that. I mean, we've, we commend Dynamite for consistently mm-hmm. opening on a high. Um, but a lot of, especially a lot of WWE, it opens, it, it's more of a slow burn. It builds up 
which a lot of a lot of wrestling shows do, to be fair. But this match, this especially the street fight stipulation, the whole thing was just booked really well, and it was really engaged in an exciting match. So I want to give them credit for that. Um, and obviously, it was uh, sort of a nice setup for the feuds that are going on as well. So obviously, we've got um, Isaiah going up against um, Escobar, or potentially going up against Escobar. So we're setting up nicely for those two having a bout with each other. Um, so that. That feud clearly isn't finished, and um, yeah, I'm on board for it all. I think it works well. Uh, I've mentioned it before, and I'll mention it again at this point as well. That um, Escobar and his cronies, I think, are being booked really well as well as like a he- little heel faction. I don't think they get enough credit because it's NXT and it's it's sort of the cruiserweight division, but the, I think they're really good. Uh, I, it's a shame that they're not more highlighted as a, a like the, a, in some respects, this is better than like hair business for instance as a as a mm. heel faction do you know what i mean um yeah. and it's just a shame they don't seem to get the the same attention but uh yeah all in all quite pleased with that one um the next highlight i want to give is um the rear um challenging mercedes martinez to a cage match i'm well intrigued by that should be ace she's obviously going to accept it so i'm going to take it as uh, as writ at this point even though it wasn't confirmed but let's face it whoever how many times have you seen someone challenge someone and they go, nah, I'm good, and you never see oh, the match? Yeah. Even exactly. if you get some shenanigans, like you always ultimately see the match. So that that should be a great one as well. Uh, so I'm, I'm massively looking forward to that. So I have to go into the highlights just for the fact that they're setting it up. And, uh, you know, again, we've mentioned it a couple of times with Rhea going up against these um, these other big hitters. And I think, correct me if I'm wrong, Carl, but I imagine this would be a good one for you because you like seeing people who are similar um, Ooh, yeah. go up against each other you like seeing that that sort of challenge that going toe to toe and this because we've seen Martinez booked really well up to now as a you know, like a legitimate sort of um, I don't know how the, the correct coin term for it but you know beast um, yeah, as I say, in, a, in a similar way to Rhea um, so yeah I, I'm well intrigued to see sort of who goes over on that front as well I think we've been saying for ages like we've wanted to see like um very Ripley take on someone like Martinez. Um, I think the the added stipulation of a cage match just adds something that little bit extra to it as well, um, which mm. is quite nice. So um, yeah, I'm, I'm I'm proper all all for this. I can't wait to see them square off. And I think, do you know what? I think Martinez is quite big and and kind of ripped anyway. But I think Ray Ripley's been you know in the fucking gym putting some work in. So oh, yeah. I think like yeah, it's he's uh, looking awesome. And she to be fair, like. Yeah, definitely. So I'm I'm well excited for it. Hopefully, it's a it's a good showing for for Ray Ripley because you know after the thing with Charlotte, we haven't really seen enough of her. I would say in that kind yeah, of yeah. To be fair, they've done some. They've thrown a few bits together. She's been involved in tag matches here and there, but we've not seen any sort of like really good match or anything even that memorable up to now. Mm. But I mean, it's not often we get to see a, a women's cage match either. There's still rather few and far between. I know they've already set the bar. We've had, um, I remember distinctly Banks being in one, but I can't remember who she was against. That's good. I want to say Charlotte. But, um, yeah, I think so. But yeah, I mean, we don't get them very often. So, um, you know, in some respects, she, it's another sort of pin for the women's evolution as well. Um, and then the last highlight I've got, Carl, is the, the mm. IM match itself. I think it was ace. It's hard to put something over. It's it's obviously going to last an hour, um, mm. and it's hard to put that sort of match over. But um, I think it was booked really well. Um, these four people participants obviously all really talented, so it was always going to be a good match. But even the way they've ended it, I don't know about you, but I was really pleased that they sort of ended it with that sort of draw, so that we now have to have a determiner next week between um, Balor and and Cole. I'm, I'm like, yeah, that, that's. I didn't expect that as a result. So that's actually quite intriguing. I'm not. Uh, I'm not annoyed by it, which, in theory, I would have been like, oh, for fuck's sake, just give us a decision. But I was actually. I thought it went really well, especially the way they they work together in the match. Um. So yeah, it's it's going to be. I think the whole setup and the whole match was good. Uh, so I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, I mean, you've you've got four of the best that NXT have got um to to, to put out really um going up against each other. I think. I was on the fence initially with the way that it got booked because initially I was kind of like, oh, fuck's sake, well, it's, we haven't even got a winner after all this kind of thing. But then I do think it was quite smart. The thing that worries mm. me a little bit is the fact that, you know, Champ has come back and he, you know, he's not featuring in this picture and mm. there's Gargano. And I'm like, please don't go back to each other. <laughs> For fuck's sake, yeah. Please oh, don't. I never thought of that. Um, <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, I've you know, Balor and Balor and Cole will definitely be a, an absolute banger, and you know, it's going to be interesting to see which direction they go with it. I don't think Finn has been NXT champion in a long, long time, and obviously Cole's only just you know lost it. So 
I'm going to throw a, um, an interesting thought out, or not interesting, probably boring, really. I'm gonna, my theory here, Carl, is um, especially after Balor being like, oh, you're not going to see the demon anytime soon. Um, I think we're probably going to get Demon Balor, and he's going to take the win and get the title again. Mm, okay. I think it's a I bit mean, too think, soon to put it back on Cole. I think it's long overdue. I suppose who who's the face at this point? Because they're both heels, really, aren't they? Yeah, well, that's, it was a bit of an odd book, and, or should be a bit of an odd book in that sense as well, because we've got heel-heel. Which um, doesn't normally work very well, but um, yeah, I think this could be a good opportunity to turn uh, Cole face though, mm. turn him face in the match against the Demon. Yeah, I'm, I'm, you know, there you go. That, do that, WWE, make that one happen, please. <laughs> please. Yeah, I don't think we've ever seen a heel Demon either, have we? No, that's the thing. So, I'd, be, I'd be intrigued yeah. to see that one. Mm. We might mm. have seen a heel Demon in New Japan if we watched it though. <laughs> yeah, potentially. <laughs> so. As for the Oshite skull, I've only really got one, right? And that's not to say it was a great week. In all fairness, it was a, it was a good week. Um, but I've only got one Oshite, and that was the Bronson Reed Thatcher match. And firstly, because Bronson Reed, uh, he's, I mentioned I wasn't big on him when he went up against Karrion Cross, and I was like, this guy. And then every week after that, he's been brilliant, and I've been really behind Bronson, and I've been really wanting him to get a push. And why not give him a push, right? Uh, and instead, we get him losing to Thatcher. And now he's going to go up against Austin Theory. Yay, I guess. Mm. And he better fucking win that, right? And Oh, Austin Theory's back. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we're going to have Thatcher go up against um, Damian Priest, which, again, heel versus heel. Just mentioned it earlier. Same thing again. That shouldn't mm. work, really. And I'm not... I'm not invested in that. That's the title match, and I'm not even that bothered about it. So I just I think, think that was kind of poorly booked. I think they, they, they try... I don't really know whether they think of Priest as a, as a heel anymore. I think they've kind of got this weird vision in their head that, it, that he's a face. Really? Because they haven't really mm. done anything to make him look like a face. He's at the risk of becoming a bit like Corbin, where he's just kind of not anything other than unlikable as a character. Like, yeah, not feel- against Corbin as a person, character-wise. I- not like I feel it. like the way the way he celebrated the, the title win and stuff in the jacuzzi and stuff like that, he was getting interviewed and I don't know, he kind of, he came across then as a bit of a, yeah, maybe. Or... And uh, the trouble is he's got the personality of a spud, so <laughs> it's hard to come across as entertaining. <laughs> yeah, true, true. So, um, yeah, I'm just a bit, I'm not sold on, on that decision. I'd have much preferred Bronson Reed versus Priest, but then I'd have been wanting Bronson Reed to win and they're not going to give the win. So the priest is going to win. Let's be honest. He's not going to lose the title mm. so quickly. So maybe it's the right call. But who wants Austin Theory versus Bronson Reed? I, I'm not sure where they're coming from with that. Well, I think you probably gave just as much of a build up to his return as NXT did. <laughs> oh, hey, Austin oh. <laughs> I think they're trying to act like he never left. I know. It's all just a crazy fever dream, Austin. You were never on Raw. Seth, who? <laughs> I think I think they probably he just you just woke up eventually after no one came to see to him. Um, you know, in the audience by the chairs where, where they left him and then it was just in the middle of an NXT show and he's like, oh yeah, it must have just been a dream. <laughs> yeah, he finally stood up again. <laughs> oh, there he is. Um, yeah, it's just so crazy. Like, this man has been buried so much that he's now just landed right back where he was. Poor bastard. He had a decent show on the main <laughs> roster in some respects and then they sort of had him betrayed because he wasn't truly a Mexican so he couldn't stay with them and then let's put him with Seth but then Seth only needs Murphy. Doesn't need anyone else, does he? Well, obviously. They didn't even explain that. Like, just, just gone, isn't he? He's just gone. He's gone. Yeah, crazy stuff. As far as the rating goes for NXT, after that little digression, um, I'm going to give it a two and a half. It was, it was, a, it was an all right week. Um, not the most exciting. The main event was awesome. The opener was awesome. But, um, yeah, all in all, it wasn't like, you know, nail by energy. You see, I'm not going to forget this week of NXT kind of stuff. Um, so I think two and a half is, is fair. It's firmly in the middle. So this is probably a shocker to you, Anthony. I, I actually give it a three. Really? So, um, for me... Th- Explain this, this yourself, what, Carl. <laughs> this is what NXT does well, and this is what NXT should be. Um, it was a small, condensed, four-match card. The main event was people who know how to wrestle, who are fantastic at wrestling, actually putting on a fantastic show. Um, you had the Breezango stuff at the beginning. like It was a good start to it. Um, and then, like, the middle stuff was a bit filler. I, I don't like Tim Thatcher. I think since the Matt Riddle match, he's just being like, meh. I think, I think, I don't know if everyone feels like this. I'd be curious to know. But I think WWE like him more than the audience do. Yeah. And I don't think WWE have realised that yet. No. Um, 
they're, they're definitely trying to turn him into this kind of star or give him some kind of like grit because they loved using the word grit at one point. Grit. Um, grit, but, grit. Yeah, but like I wasn't that keen on that match. I thought the Candice LeRae match was fine. But yeah, I, I just think they're at the best when they, they don't overcomplicate it. They don't do too many fucking stupid, silly angles and stuff. This was just a, okay, we care about the, the title. We're going to crown a new champ. We didn't, but the match itself was was really good and it, it kind of set up a future episode, which you know I'll probably actually be keen to see. So yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, three for me. Okay, yeah, makes sense. Much as I hate to admit it, makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> so on to dynamite. So I won't gloss. I will. Oh yeah, I will gloss over this quite a bit because obviously all out is where the main action happens. Um, oh yeah. But all in all, I thought it was a it was a really good show. Um. So in terms of the match card. We had Santana and Ortiz taking on Best Friends as the opener, um, mm. and I thought it was a really strong opener. Um, we had the Young Bucks and the Jurassic Express um, taking on SCU and Private Party in eight-man action. Um, so this was the two winning teams would, uh, well, the winning team, like the two teams that make up the winning team would go on to face each other at All Out. So there's a bit of a stipulation behind that. We had Chris Jericho taking on, um, oh yeah, uh, sorry, Young Bucks and Jurassic Express one. Oh, sorry. We had, yeah. <laughs> we had Jericho taking on Joey Janela, um, with Jericho yeah, I mean, picking up the win. I will say, good match, but that was kind of random. Yeah, very random. Um, <laughs> I'm not. Yeah, we'll come on to it when we talk about it. Yeah, sorry. Um, yeah, but yeah, very random. Um, then we had the debut of Thunder Rosa, and she took on Serena. Like that proper blew my mind. Uh, obviously, we haven't seen Serena since the Straight Edge Society days with the shaved head, um, mm. but. Yeah, so I was just like, holy shit, Serena's there too. Um, but yeah, so that, that was a really, really good match. And obviously it did what it needed to to get Thunder Rosa over. I, honestly, I, <clears throat> I can wait till all else if you want, but I'm so over on um, <laughs> on Thunder Rosa. Like, can we keep her, Carl, please? <laughs> can we keep her? Can we keep her, please? Please, please keep her on oh. AEW. I, okay. I, 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 she almost makes me want to watch NWA. <laughs> yeah. Because it must be good. Like... Uh, uh, yeah, I'll let you finish with the card, but I, yeah, I'm, I'm so big on air at the minute. <laughs> um, and the main event of the evening was John Moxley taking on MJF's lawyer, Mark Sterling. And any guesses who might have picked up, picked up the win in that one? Well, clearly was, Sterling. Obviously, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was obviously MJ, uh, uh, Moxley. So, <laughs> <laughs> MJF won. <How> the fuck? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> shenanigan. No, um, so yeah, really good show overall. Um, mostly highlights, to be honest. So, the opening, um, again, this has gone. It's gone back to how like the really strong openings. So oh, this yeah, was yeah. this was a match that in 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 theory could have quite easily been at all out. Like the story was there, the build to it yeah. had been there. To be um, honest, I think the only reason it wasn't is because all out was already a four hour card. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think yeah, it 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 makes sense, but it was just a shame. I think for them not oh, to yeah, have that, totally that main stage, even if it would have been on the, the buy in, but. I thought it was a bit random that it was the opener to Dynamite, considering how much build up it had. But at the same time, it, you know, it delivered. It was a really strong opener, um, and yeah, I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, I loved the stuff with MJF. So like, uh, the, the Mark, the lawyer, was hiding out in the back, just trying to get get away from it. So MJF basically gets Wardlow to kick the door, and MJF with with Zimmer frame at this point as well, <laughs> just to fucking make it even more funny. Um, and basically, he tells him he's he's fighting. It was a really intense kind of promo from MJF saying he's he's dreamed of being a world champ his whole life. So he, he, you know he's got two choices: he either goes out there and fights, or he goes straight into a wood chipper. Um, Damn. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> he's gonna kill a guy. Um, <laughs> went full Marty Gennetti with that one it's gone full Marty Gennetti um, so the eight man tag was good as well um, I think you know we, we've, t- we've talked about this quite a bit they, they do these multi-man matches surprisingly well they yeah. never well very rarely do they feel like a bit of a clusterfuck where you can't follow yeah. it um, put it this way if you saw the same if you just saw the card and you saw that many people involved in a match yeah. on WWE you'd go uh, that's not going to go well that's going to be a mess. <laughs> I'm actually starting to have faith because I'm, I'm, that's ingrained in me when I see it on a Dynamite card. I'm like, oh, shit. Mm. But I'm starting to get used to it. It's like, it's probably going to be decent because somehow they managed to, to to book them really well where everyone gets the right amount of attention. It doesn't feel like a clusterfuck. They are, yeah, I, I'm very impressed with their eight-man matches. Yeah, definitely. I think, you know, like, their, their, their tag division is stacked as well. Like, Young Bucks are probably the best tag team out there. You know, maybe not, maybe 
Excellent no FTR, but, <laughs> but we'll we'll come on to that. Um, you know, Jurassic Express are fantastic. Luchasaurus for the fucking size he is. The stuff he can do is insane. Jungle Boy is obviously a future star. And then you've got SEU, the vets and private party, the young up-and-comers. So the talent was was awesome and the match itself was really good. I did feel like it felt like a bit... It was lazy booking, I think, because like the stipulation of, well, okay, the winning team are going to face each other and stuff like that like, at All Out. And it was like, but why? <laughs> like... <laughs> Why? Is it ju- just to get the Young Bucks on the card? Just to get Jurassic Express on the card? That's what it felt like because mm. for me that, you know, I, I would rather had, I know it wouldn't have been as good of a match and, it, you know, it, it wasn't as good of a match but you would have put Best Friends and Santana and Ortiz on the card over, over this. Mm. But, yeah, take your points. Yeah, so I guess, you know, that's just me probably being a bit too picky but it just felt a bit lazy yeah. in terms of the, the story. You'd have put this awesome tag team instead of this awesome tag team. Yeah, I take your points. Yeah. It, it may be a little <laughs> bit nitpicky but I, I, do, I do see where you're coming from. Yeah, um, it's one of them. I can't be too much of a fanboy. I've got to, got to call them out. <laughs> oh yeah, show, no, definitely, know? definitely. <laughs> um, do you know what? Like, this is a really small part of the show, but I fucking love this. It made me laugh so much. It was um, the Cassidy Hager interaction? So like, Jake Hager barges into Cassidy's um, dress well, dressing room or wherever the fuck he is, and they just both sit there on on a chair just in silence and just like, <laughs> I just I don't know what it was. It just made me laugh so much. Just like it was just so well done. Like because. They could, both their characters like came across without them hardly saying a word. Oh, yeah. Um, so yeah, it was just so funny. I I I, I want to see more of Hager to be honest. It's really impressed me since he's been in AEW. In um, all fairness, he's um apparently he needs to sort of quieten down on social media a little bit. But mm. yeah, as a character on on AEW, he's been awesome. And to be honest, like surprisingly more comedic in a good way than I expected him to be. Like, not, yeah. hey, look, he's got a lisp. <laughs> well, that's no, it. In WWE, in, in it didn't look like he had any charisma at all. And like, yeah, the only exactly. gifts he gave him was like, fucking bullshit stuff. But he's legit funny. He's made me laugh out loud on several occasions. Now. Oh, yeah. Even the bit when, um, when they were doing like the, the video call and stuff like that. And he told his kid, the kids to cover his ear, cover their ears and stuff. Yeah. And to be honest, even watching him flim flam is, is funny <laughs> as fuck. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Like, yeah, I, I, I really like the guy. But no, I thought, um, I thought him and Orange, uh, just I don't know what it was. There was it just felt like there was a bit of uh, chemistry there between the two of them. Um, yeah. But ultimately, he was going in there to tell Cassidy that Jericho wanted to be ringside for his match. Um, and the match between Jericho and Janela, as we already said, felt random. And it was it was very random, to be fair. It didn't really feel necessary. Mm. Um, I guess they probably tried to put like play it off as like, oh, it was a tune-up match and stuff like that. But Yeah, yeah. You know, did did he need a match against Janela? Like Janela? No, he could have just done. This is one promo where I'm. It, it, I'm not saying it was a bad match, but if they'd have not had this on the card, I yeah. wouldn't have missed it. It wouldn't have made a difference, I don't think. But the whole point was to get Cassidy there to kind of start attacking Jericho and hype up the the feud, mm. which you know it delivered in that front. But did I really need to sit through the the fucking Jericho Janela match to yeah. get there? Probably not. Um, Thunder Rosa. So the first time that. We'd seen her. Um, thought she looked really good. Um, oh yeah. Part of me, part of me wonders whether like doing like a squash match would have been better in this, you know, ex- example. Because the first time we're seeing her, and Serena took her to the fucking limits. Do you know what I mean? I'd take was... your points. Yeah, maybe a more decisive <laughs> victory would have been more yeah, sensible. Yeah, because she's obviously she's coming in as as a champ from another promotion, and we're meant to think, well, she's a proper legit threat to Sheeta. Um, but then, yes, yeah, Serena was like putting in loads of offense and stuff as well. And I don't know. So that felt a bit weird, but at the same time, it's, it's, it's great this to kind see of thing, Like, cause I've seen like everything kind of happened in a blur. So I've already seen all out. So I didn't get to dwell on dynamite enough. Mm. Um, cause for those of you who, who are unaware, we get dynamite on a Friday. If you watch it on our TV, um, I know you can get it through fight TV, but I, I don't. So I was watching it on the Friday. Um, so it wasn't that long before I got all out. Now, Really speaking, this could have been worrying to watch it and then stew on it for a few days because you go, well, this is clear. Like Thunder Rose is not going to get much of a a show in here because she's part of another promotion. So then, like, they're not going to want to squash one of their own talents over for Thunder Rosa because of that and and so on like that. And then you think, oh, this match is going to be a mess for All Out because you know that the, they're obviously just going to have she to go over it in some quite aggressive fashion so that they can be like, look how awesome our stars are, but. Having seen all out, and we'll get onto it, but yeah, I'm I'm not so worried now. But I, I do take <laughs> your point that this probably could have been more of a squash. Yeah, 
Um, and then the final highlight. Uh, so the main event, um, I did really enjoy it. It was, it was proper silly. Like it was WWE degree level silly. But, you know, if you, t- you know, after the fact, if you take that into account and whatever, you know, MJF showed he can be a fucking badass and he can hang with with John Moxley. Like, oh yeah, yeah, like that. He, that was quite cementing in. Like, all right, yeah, okay. Yeah, like the the dude showed his range. Let's put it that way. Like he, he battered battered Moxley. He fucking busted him open. He was biting his forehead and showing that he can take that hardcore style to him. It's a it's um, a level of aggression that you just don't expect out of MJF. So I think getting that point across before all out was definitely a boss idea. Yeah, it was um it was awesome. That was a great end to the show as well. It made you like, oh fucking hell, I want to see this main event. So mm, properly yeah. delivered. Definitely um, proper good hype there. <laughs> the, yeah, as for the O'Shites, I've only got two. So this one won't come as a surprise because I fucking moan about it every week. But another FTR Omega page episode of Jerry Springer. Um, I just, yeah, I'm looking forward to this being over. Let's put it that way. Um, so we will go into what happened at All Out um, shortly. Um, but yeah. I agree though. Like they, I think they've kind of stewed on this a bit too long now. Yeah, it, it's proper. Just it's it's what been wearing thin for a while, and it's like mm-hmm. there's nothing left now. So just yeah, it needs to be over. And then lastly, um, the fact like the only other kind of um, oh shite is that casino battle royal promo segment. Like this felt like something out of WCW. Everyone <laughs> was talking over each other. The mics weren't working, so people would start the promo. You don't need, they'd only kick in after about six or seven seconds. You know, you've got Taz, who's a fantastic talker. You've got fucking Jake, who's one of the best talkers ever in the business. You've got Eddie Kingston, who's a fantastic talker. That segment was shit. Like, it was so poorly done. On paper, it's like, okay, wow, this is going to be... But I don't, I don't know what it is. Like, I feel like Kingston's a bit too much of a loose cannon, and you'll just, like talk shit basically Taz <laughs> Taz is good um, but at the same time can can fall a bit flat or he can be you know what I mean he can feel a bit like yeah okay yeah you, you've said your point a couple of times yeah. Jake just fucking he just interrupts people and just like you know what I mean it, it throws stuff off sometimes so I don't know it was just all a fucking clusterfuck of a promo and then the next minute everyone comes out who's in the fucking battle royal and they're all just fighting in the middle of the ring as though it was the battle royal there and then. I just, I hated it. I thought it was a really, really bad segment. Mm-hmm. Um, it's probably the first time I've, I've really hated a segment in AEW. Um, but I just thought it just, it so missed the mark on what they tried. And I, I completely get it as, as Tony Khan or, or whoever booked the show. You go, oh yeah, we're going to have a promo segment with fucking Taz, Jake and Eddie Kingston. Like, holy shit, that's going to be fun. It was terrible. Yeah. It was all over yeah. the place. I think, um, I mean, you, you're quite impacted about that. But um yeah, I think it was just too messy, which is funny because I, I commend them for being able to deal with multi-man things and then not come across as messy as mm. fuck. This was a little bit too messy, unfortunately. Um, yeah. You can see what they were going for, but it did fail in execution, if we're being brutally honest. I think I think that's why I'm so impassioned about it because it could have been so good. Like, all three of them are fucking phenomenal talkers. Oh, yeah, yeah. And it was, just, it was just a waste. And like, Oh, yeah. When you look at it on paper, definitely, yeah. Down for that. Yeah. But, and like the way they did the thing with everyone coming out afterwards and getting involved in the battle, yeah, it just didn't work. Just didn't like. Um, but alas, that was dynamite. Um, I, I've been toying with this, Anthony. I've been toying with it, and I still don't know if I'm. Full, so I think I'm going to break the system a little bit. I couldn't couldn't <gasps> decide. I couldn't decide between a three and a three and a half. Whoa, 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 whoa! You you can't do this to me, Carl. <laughs> so I'm going to break the system, Anthony. I've got to, um, and I'm going to give it. A 3.25, three and a quarter, if you will, because I don't feel like it was good enough to get three and a half, but at the same time, I still enjoyed it more than I did NXT, and I feel NXT was justified as a three. Right. That's fair. Well, I didn't give NXT a three. I gave them a two and a half, mm-hmm. I think. But just because we're, we're breaking the system, I'm going to give Dynamite a 3.1. <laughs> <laughs> Fine, fine. Oh, no, do, I, I, I just, um, I just, I, I, it was a, a three for me. Um, I've been a bit harsher on the other shows, so the balance is probably about the same. In all fairness, <laughs> I think we've just come at our, our score a little bit different. But mm. this was definitely better than NXT, but not by a wide margin. In all fairness, yeah. Um, so yeah, for me, it's a three on, the, especially on the basis of what I've given NXT. Okay, okay. So, so the final show. Oh, well, what? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, I, back up, man. You can have all of SmackDown. I guess. <laughs> Come here to lift the SmackDown, Carl. <laughs> right. So, the SmackDown. The SmackDown? The SmackDown. The SmackDown. As far as the card goes, 
we had um, Roman uh, doing a bit of a, a promo, yeah, um, mm-hmm. and they announced a fatal four-way match. Now, I'll, I'll go into it a little bit further, me, me slight issue with that, but um, that was how we opened the show. Roman and Paul Heyman come out. Paul Heyman does all the talking. Fantastic idea. And um, they, they announce a fatal four-way, right? We then have Heavy Machinery going up against The Miz and Morrison for some reason uh, with Heavy Machinery taking the win. We have the Golden Roll Models having a rematch against the... Um, I can't say that. Against um, <laughs> Nia, Nia Jax and uh, Shayna Baszler with uh, <laughs> Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler retaining the titles. Fair enough. Um, we have the Fatal 4-Way match of um, what ended up being Matt Riddle, Baron Corbin, Jay Uso and Sheamus with uh, Jay Uso taking the win. More Obviously. to talk about on that front. We had the Mystery Legs, which we've already talked about on the ringside before. <laughs> We had um, the Firefly Funhouse, um, in which sort of we alluded to Alexa and this new character turning up in the Funhouse next week. Um, and for some reason, those things, is, as much as the card sounds a bit odd, and I'll get to moaning straight away, Carl, right? Because that sounds weird, doesn't it? Fatal four way match. Mm. And then the fun, yeah, because the, the had all this shit happening while people were coming out for the Fatal four way match. It took ages to. We had Matt Riddle come out. Right, so we had a bro, and then he stood in the ring for like six hours while we had a promo for the mystery legs, a Firefly Funhouse segment, <laughs> a segment with Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross. Then we get back to the match where everyone else comes down. Why was he stood there that long? Why did they do no that? Idea. It was such a fucking mess. Anyway, <laughs> so the highlights, Cal. This was going to be, I have to give it a highlight because they got me, right? And it's the fact that Roman's changed his shit, right? As, as random <laughs> as that sounds, right? He had, he come out. When he, when he attacked the SummerSlam, he had the shirt that said, wreck everyone and leave. And my first smart-ass, snarky comment was going to be, you didn't wreck everyone and leave, did you? You turned up at the last minute and won. And guess what his shirt said? <laughs> he come out with a new shirt that said, turn up and win. And I'm like, fucker, got me. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, highlight, I made up with that. That is exactly <laughs> what you did. <laughs> so, um, yeah, credit to Roman's shirt. Um, but again, Heyman is fucking a master of promos, man. He's like, so good, isn't he? This was so passionate. It's weird how different it was to the what he does for Brock as well. That's it. Mm. Like you really feel it this time. Like this was so impassioned. It actually it it set up a lot of stuff that like in some senses I didn't even know was there. Like he sold everything about why Roman's a heel. And it's stuff I weren't even thinking about. That's all kind of true. Like mm. You know, he was meant to be at the top tier and people resent him. He was meant to have this match and he lost his opportunity due to a life-threatening illness and then people still hate him and boo him. And you're like, shit, this is all kind of true. And like, he's, he's putting it across <laughs> in such a way that I'm like, fuck, yeah, I really get why he's a bad guy. <laughs> like, mm. Roman's so justified in being a heel right now. Yeah. Um, and that's all for the masterful work of, of Heyman. And this is exactly what they need to do. Roman, stand there, look like a badass. And you, you've definitely been hitting the gym while you're away, so you do look like a fucking monster. And uh, Heyman, just talk him up. It's it's awesome. The only questionable part of Heyman's promo for me was when he said, uh, you may think I corrupted him, but he corrupted me. And I'm like, oh, let's, <laughs> yeah, let's what exactly the wrestling, guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I thought that was a weird line as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, Everything else, absolute hit. I was totally made up with this promo, and I'm sold mm-hmm. on Roman as a heel. Totally made up with the way the book and that. As much as I'm, I'm not too over on the um, some of the decisions they're making with the matches. Definitely sold on Roman as a heel. Yeah. Um, the other highlight for me was um, I don't know how you're feeling about it, but I'm really enjoying Sami Zayn. Like this whole thing, and I know it's kind of been done before, but this whole thing we've got with him coming out with the title. And like I never lost, so I'm the champ. But I, I was sold on the way he was booking it. Like he, he was before anyone come out, he's been a snarky bastard. He was even speaking to the production team saying, Why didn't you introduce me as the champ? Why wasn't my card right on? I'm I'm sold on the way he's putting himself across as a heel. And I'm actually I'm more interested in Zane um than I am Jeff for obvious reasons, because as you know, Carl, I did not like Jeff. Yeah, I'd, um I, I quite like it to be honest. Um he's he's a bit annoying. To be fair, but he needs to be because he's playing the heel role. I think. Oh yeah, yeah. From a storyline standpoint, he's absolutely, you know, he's got every right to be that way. He's, you know, he is the Intercontinental Champion. Um, they went off and had this tournament without him, and it's like, well, I'm the rightful champion, dickhead. And also, we get to see a matchup which I don't think we've ever seen before, which is Jeff versus Sammy. So, mm. um, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm happy. Uh, he's back. Uh, I do think it's probably going to be, you know, Jeff wins. Lol. Um, and then where does Sammy go from here? But 
Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm finding it interesting. At least it's better than him, like Jeff, trying to go back with like I don't know AJ or something like that. It's definitely a different angle. Oh yeah, and let's be honest, we could have seen Sammy come back and it not be mentioned at all, and then never see the title again. So I like yeah. that the fact that they've tried to work with what happened as well. Um, and then the um, the last highlight, and I'm interested to know whether you class this as a highlight yourself, but the um, the slight hint of um, Roman not just being a heel but being a manipulative prick as well, mm-hmm. because he's sort of like um, like you know, oh, I got you this shot at the at the match, Jay, and you can't let the family down. And he's like, it, it's coming across like. Oh yeah, I'm doing a nice thing for you, but he clearly just wants an easy ride at the pay per view, and um, I, I found that interesting. And they're clearly setting up to this family feud, uh, not the game show. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, I, I like how they were putting him across as like a, a bit of a manipulative player as well. I, I thought that was actually quite good. Yeah, um, I quite liked it to be honest. Uh, I was a bit worried because um, after that fantastic promo to start off the show, when he runs into him backstage, he kind of didn't seem as heelish then, and he was a bit like. I don't know, like old Roman a little yeah, bit. Well, like, I, yeah, see, cool. I take your points because they had that little interaction. He's like, oh, we should get a steak later mm-hmm. or whatever, right? Yeah. And, yeah. Like you say, he wasn't, like, you're a bit like, what's that about? But then when it, it becomes apparent that he's manipulating him, you go, all right, okay. That, that yeah, it makes it more sense, like he's though. playing the game then, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so I, I thought that they executed that really well as well. Yeah, no, I agree. And then for those who, because um, it's going to be sort of mentioned in the Oshites, but um, Jay ended up in the match after Big E was taken out of the match. So, and that was, again, a little show would have had of going, why the fuck did Jay get a shot? But it apparently came from Roman. So that, again, all makes sense, you know, using influence and that. It was really well put together. Now, as for the Oshites, Carl, um, <laughs> this may be a bit, uh, like, I don't mean to be topical, and um, it is slightly said in jest, but um, we had uh, Seamus attack an unarmed black man in self-defense, in Seamus's words. Um, given the current climate with, with everything in America, I think that was a really fucking weird thing for WWE to do, especially because yeah. he literally just like wailed and was like, oh, it was self-defense. Like, what the fuck are you talking yeah. about? Such a weird sort of gimmick. thing to do. <laughs> no, it's really not. And I'm chuckling at it, but it's like, okay. But basically, Seamus is not done having a feud with Big E. He attacked him um, when he was taking a cake to Xavier Woods or some shit. Um, yeah, okay. Even that pissed me off because, like I, I said last week, he's meant to be you know, a serious like singles competitor now. And it's like, just fucking forget about New Day for a minute. Like, Jesus, just be someone. Like yeah, beat an individual exactly, yeah. for one minute, yeah, and you yeah. say like, "Oh, bring a wood to cake." Like, what? Okay. <laughs> I know it's yeah. They do need some work on that, or it's just going to be in, in a losing effort to Seamus and then forgotten about. Um, while I'm on it, because it is one of my own shades. Why is Seamus dressing like he's about to board the fucking Titanic? <laughs> it's a proper weird look, that isn't it? To be fair, I know it's meant to be some sort of classic, classic Irish thing. Maybe I don't know, but honestly, you look like you should be on the Titanic. Like, I mean, it's a bit too retro. You might as well be a steampunk to act now. I'm not sure what's worse, his current look or the fucking mohawk and the plaited beard thing that he had for a bit. At this point, I'd prefer the mohawk. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> bit weird. Um, me other... I don't know... I, I think this is probably going to be a little bit of a conversation for us because I know we've already sort of briefly spoke about it, but it's going in me oh shite, and that is Bailey and the betrayal. So we had um, a rematch for the tag titles. We saw... Sasha Banks um, severely injured her knees by going for um, a knee shot um, against Nia and missing and hitting the um, turnbuckles and so, sort of put herself out significantly to the point they were getting EMTs involved and the like. Um, and then we saw Bailey helping her off the ring apron and then just decided to beat the shit out of her. Um, and whilst we've been waiting for the betrayal for a while, and I actually prefer that it was Bailey betraying Sasha, not the other way around. Um, I just the timing of it just seems a little bit odd. Like if they'd have done it at the pay per view, I'd have understood. If they'd have done it after a build towards something else, I'd have understood. But to go, okay, we'll do it the week after the pay per view randomly on SmackDown just feels a little bit odd. Um, yeah, I don't know. I feel like they just start going right. We're going to spend that story. Yeah, definitely. I think like for me, it, it was the highlight of the show. Um, don't get me wrong, but um, I can completely get why it's in the O'Shea just from the timing of it because. Mm. It, it, it was literally the weirdest time to do something like that. <laughs> like, yeah. I know I didn't mention it in the highlights, but I'll, I'll have to give the credit there because it's in me O'Shites, but Bailey, you know, that was a, a good brutal attack. I can't, I'll give her a give it a due. I've not really put her, give her much credit as a heel 
but you know the chair shot and everything was like it was really it was well executed as a yeah. as a betrayal but um yeah just the timing of it just really baffles me because i think you mentioned it as well when we were talking about it um uh, obviously not on the podcast uh that the way they're setting it up is like what pay-per-view are they going to put this for and i know we had a little bit of back and forth on that but it's like we're now set we're, we've now started this train so like this is the betrayal so she's going to want redemption so you're going to back and forth you might have a couple of matches but ultimately what pay-per-view is this going to land on it's going to land on like a, well a c-list one isn't it it's not going to land on a big or, or it's not going to land on the big four surely the only thing the only thing i could think is will she be back in time for survivor series if they do that because mm, then maybe, technically yeah. it's one of the big four but it's still it's, it's not, not the really best big four, is it? No, not anymore. Do you know what I mean? It probably goes Mania, Rumble. No, Mania, SummerSlam, Rumble. Probably in WWE that is. And then, like, oh, right. for, for me, for me, I think it's uh, Mania, Rumble. But uh, really, you know what? I'll be honest with you. For me, it's Rumble, Mania. Oh really? Uh, I don't know. And, yeah, I mean, I would never, never miss a Rumble. I have missed a Mania. Oh, okay, interesting. Um, I don't think I'd miss either. Yeah, in all fairness, uh, yeah, that's the preferred <laughs> option. But yeah. um, but like, I, I, there's, there's been some weak manias, but even a bad Royal Rumble is a good Royal Rumble. Yeah, I, I get that actually. Yeah, um, it's a very good, very good point actually. <laughs> hmm. But uh, anyway, we're, we're moving on. So we're going to have to discuss this <laughs> in a unique segment one time. <laughs> but but, um, but yeah, for me, I'm just like, this is either going to get dragged on too long or be cut too short now to fit into a pay per view spec. Which mm. um, yeah, so it's more the timing on it than the actual betrayal. We all saw the betrayal being built up anyway. Yeah. Um. I okay. I need to. I don't know. You just like oh, you just hate Jeff. You've already said it to me once before. <laughs> but seriously, right? Why can't Jeff ever just not be the fucking underdog? Right? We have a situation where we have AJ Styles, Sami Zayn, and Jeff. And what happens? Jeff's the underdog and he's getting beaten up by the two heels and he has to overcome it. Why does he have to overcome every fucking thing in his fucking life? Like, why are they booking him as this perpetual loser? <laughs> Just do something different. <laughs> I mean, it, it's, a, it's a very fair point. It's a very impassioned point, but it's a very fair point, yeah. I think, Probably um... more impassioned than it deserves for the brief segment where he got beaten <laughs> up by them. But still, it's just because since he's come back, all I've seen him do is just get railroaded by people and then somehow win yay it's like yeah. just stop it <laughs> please yeah i don't know he, he is he's just this underdog character all the time isn't he have so, we ever seen him as a heel um i think once or twice but not like not any massive run i don't think i have I've only ever seen him as the under this is kind of probably what's bugging me <laughs> so yeah probably just me okay moving on <laughs> Um, and a gripe that I've alluded to a couple of times, um, Raw set up their triple threat. Right? They had matches to determine who was in the triple threat, and it was all set up, and fair play to Raw, they, they structured that. SmackDown had Heyman announce the Fatal 4-Way because they're going to do one bigger than Raw, literally how we put it across, and no one determined who the participants were. It was just announced suddenly, and then obviously originally including Big E, uh, which then swapped over to Jey Uso, which I don't mind that because they actually explained how Jey ended up in that position. But otherwise, everyone else was just randomly picked from a hat. Like, mm. other than the fact that Corbin and Riddle have got a thing going on, why was Corbin in the match? No idea. Like, people give people give AW shit for like the ranking system stuff, and they never stick with it. But at least it's like you try and use There's that some to, attempt at structure. <laughs> yeah, to kind of say, well, always oh, this in the rankings, and people always dispute it and stuff. But it is much better to articulate something like that than just go, yeah, um, Big E, because he's having a singles push now. So, yeah, we'll put him in it. Um, Sheamus, because he dresses like a fucking idiot. Um, and I don't know. See who else is in the back. And the only thing is, right, they went, this is the Fatal 4-Way, and it was essentially this feud and this feud, but it's going to be one big match. So they go, the Sheamus Big E thing and the Corbin Riddle thing, right? And then you go, well, that's a bit odd because they're feuding with each other. And then, oh, hang on, we'll, we'll eliminate Big E. And continue the Seamus Big E feud, and then we'll bring Jay into it. Who's going to win? As much as it kind of came out of left field, who's going to win? Because, well, Seamus is still going to feud with Big E, and these two are still going to feud. So, who's going to win the match? I wonder. Yeah. So, it became That's massively predictable as well. <sighs> anyway, <laughs> so um, <laughs> the other oh shit, Carl, is uh, during the tag match between Heavy Machinery and Miz and Morrison, um, Morrison stole the uh, Money in the Bank briefcase. And ran away with it. Now, one thing I'll give it credit for was um, the Miz actually made the same comments I would have made, and he actually said to Morrison, "You don't think stealing that briefcase actually means that you're the uh, money in the bank 
winner, do you? Sort of thing. And it's exactly the point I would have made. It's like, well, you, you can't just steal a contract. It doesn't work like that. So uh, I like the fact that they made a joke of that. But um, it's then revealed that um, the only thing in that briefcase was Otis's lunch again. Yeah. And um, Otis has been keeping the contract in his lunchbox, which again, like, so you've got a lunchbox and you've got a briefcase, which you seem to carry both to the ring now for some reason. And for some reason, you keep your lunch in the briefcase and you keep the contract and lunch. It's like, okay, I guess. The fuck was this? What was the point in this? Why are we constantly talking about Otis liking food? Yeah, it's because you know, because he eats so much, he needs a bigger lunchbox, so he has to put his lunch. Of course, in a, yeah. So in a briefcase, yeah, because yeah. there's lots of food. See, it makes yeah. sense. Mm. Where, um, you know, we, we had that match, uh, Mandy versus uh, Sonia, the loser leaves. Did they both fucking lose? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, apparently, yeah. Where's, where's she gone now? Bit of a shit well, stipulation. See, this, is, this is the thing that kind of puzzled me because I th- like Mandy needed some time off, understandably. Um, mm. Sonia needed some time off, understandably. But then we later found out that Mandy was also the one staying in the house. So they're both having some time off. But they wrote it into Sonia's story but didn't write it into Mandy's, so I don't know. Mandy's yeah. just not there. Sonia's not allowed to be there, and Mandy's random. <laughs> random. Um, but yeah, we didn't see anything then. But we got Tucker back now, so yay. Um, and my last gripe, Carl, isn't my last gripe? No, it's not. Wow, I've got so many more gripes. I'm so sorry about this, Carl. Um, <laughs> I can skip that one because I already mentioned it, and that was the structure <laughs> of um, the random promos while we're waiting for the Fatal 4-Way to happen. Um Oh, yeah. Okay, this is my last gripe because I've mentioned everything <laughs> as I've been ranting, right? But um, they actually asked Jay after the match how important the victory was for him. And I'm like, he's literally never had a title shot. How important do you think the fucking victory was for him? Yeah. This is the closest what... he's ever come to the top title in the company. Very fucking important, I would guess. Quality interviewing skills, isn't it? Like, <laughs> what, what's he meant to do? Yeah, take it or leave it. <laughs> oh, I don't okay. really give a fuck. Don't even know why I'm in. <laughs> Like, what are you expecting? <laughs> uh, but he obviously used the opportunity to go, oh, you're not the only uh, one who's made the family proud, Roman. So mm. he's going to get squashed. He's getting squashed, the class champion, they call it. Yeah. And they it's, mention- only- it's the pay-per-view called Gold Rush now. They keep mentioning that too. What is oh, that? God, I hope not. It, 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 should be, it should be Knight of Champions, is it? Is it Knight of Champions or Class Champions? I don't know. Can you Google that for me, Carl? Because they kept putting Gold Rush in the title card as well. And I'm like, have they give it a, mm. a subtitle now? Like they did with... Um, well, everything's got a fucking subtitle, hasn't it? You won't Extreme see it Rules, in, the horror or... show. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I feel like they've given um, this one gold rush, you know. Yeah, I can't see it on any of this stuff. But you're a liar, Carl, and I did see it with my own eyes. <laughs> I wonder whether... Let me just go to the actual... That's cool. Hmm. Anyway, I'll, um, I'll, I'll carry on, and we'll try and make this seamless. So, um, overall, SmackDown for me, it, it was... There was a lot of issues out with it, as you know. And um, it wasn't the worst. It wasn't the worst of the week. And uh, for me, it was a two. I'm going to give it a two for that. Okay, okay. I'm also giving it a two. I'm not breaking uh, convention with this one. Um, it was two point still shit. five. <laughs> it was still shit, but it was slightly better than Raw. So a yeah, two. And it was slight, but it was better. It was better than Raw. <laughs> Raw, the <laughs> flagship show, the best show, the biggest show, the first show, is now the weakest fucking show. Is well. brilliant, that isn't it? So anyway, Carl, I must have imagined that gold rush thing. Don't worry too much about that. Um, Why do you want to? I imagined. It's not a lie. If I thought it was true. <laughs> yeah. Greetings and salutations. It's your man CD, the fallen angel, Christopher Daniels, and I'm out here in the Southern California sunshine, making my way through this quarantine like everyone else. Hopefully, you're all home, safe, and healthy. Um, I want to do a quick shout out to Carl and Anthony who are the leaders of the A to the K Wrestle Talk podcast. Um, you guys can watch that on YouTube, listen to it on Spotify, etc., etc. And um, I just want to say I appreciate their support. The guys at AEW, we wouldn't be where we are today if it wasn't for fans like you guys. And I'm sure Carl and Anthony feel the same way about all of you that listen to A to the K Wrestle Talk. So um, keep listening to A to the K Wrestle Talk. You guys stay home, stay safe, stay healthy, and I'll see you later.